Welsh might have left South African shores. Well, not all the Welsh have left South African shores. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Uh, Wales, we are, what a great series it was with the Springboks in Wales. And a man uh, who uh, it comes back to Cape Town, a soft spot for this beautiful place that we call home, is Welsh legend Scott Gibbs. Scott, lucky to have you in Cape Town again. Yeah, listen, it's, it's lovely to be back. It's been a long time given the pandemic and such. Absolutely. But, you know, I'm proud to call Cape Town my home for many, many years. Um, you know, and even from my early visits in the early 90s. Yeah. It's a city that I believe just gives so much energy. So yeah. I feel the best version of myself when I'm in yeah. the Western Cape. Now, a lot of people don't know that you lived here for many years. So I want to find out all about that, about growing up in Wales, about your love for rugby, about annihilating Osterrand in 97. There's many, many fond memories of, of, of on the field and off the field. And importantly, I tried to find something that was, you know, kind of proudly British. And I thought, here's a marquee that if you can find one in good nick, uh, this specific model, it, they're becoming super collectible, not just any XK, but the RS version, the supercharged five liter beast. This is a pocket rocket. It has a lot of things in common with you. Uh, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's no, it, no, it's I, like a fine I, I wine. Like, I like the analogy. You know, it packs, it packs, it a, punch, packs yeah. a punch. There's a little bit of finesse about it. Absolutely. It's a classic old British brand Jaguar. So, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you uh, came up with it. You're behind the wheel, you're doing the driving, and we'll talk and let's have a little, have a little chat. Let's Sounds hop in good. the car. Let's go. Scott, so lovely to be in the car with you, mate. You're so at home behind the wheel of this, of this Jag. <laughs> well, listen, I'm, um, I'm not a car, car lover per se. Okay. Even though, you know, I, I've, I've driven a lot of, you know, high performance cars, yes. luxury cars, yeah. uh, simple cars. So, but I'm not. But I, I do appreciate, you know, a nice motor. Sure. As you do. Yeah. I'm growing up in Britain, where, you know, these iconic brands like. The Jensen Interceptor, oh, and oh. Aston Martin, and, and of course the Jaguar. So um, I'm familiar with the landscape, and, I, yeah. and principally I've owned Audis, BMWs, and Mercedes mm. through throughout my um, throughout my tenure. Yeah. My current car, which is is my f most favourite car, is the one series BM oh, that I have. Nice, which is which is the the M powered one. Um, and I'm so glad I got it because at the time I was I was thinking that I just needed a like a golf like yeah. a little golf diesel to, to as a run around and I couldn't find one with the defined spec um, and then lo and behold I saw ten of these one three five I yeah the M, one the M series. yeah, yeah and yeah. actually for me I've had so much pleasure in it yes and because of the pandemic yeah in Europe. Um, I most of the miles have been done in Europe. Yeah, you know, so uh, it's a real great tour. It does everything. Yeah, yeah. It's and got it's, a beautiful uh, little turbocharged engine in it. That's right. Turbo that's in. right. Yeah, you know it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I'm currently smoking, as they say. <laughs> and, uh, I love that. When I'm smoking. And uh, it, it is a great car. And, yeah. Uh, but as we, you know, as we sit in this, there's no better note than the V8. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. There's no better note. Talk, let's talk. Let's take you back to the very beginning. Where, where did your your, your love for for rugby come from? You 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 growing up in a in a, a football crazy country. Where did rugby? Where did like? Well, rugby listen, come uh, from? you know, but back in the uh, back in the early seventies, and at the height of obviously Wales' zenith as a as a international team with the likes of Edwards yeah. and, and JPR Williams, Gerald Davis, and JJ Williams, Mervyn Davis, come on, the Pontypool front row. Yeah. There was no other recourse than to play rugby. And if, and if I'm a truth mole, it was athletics in the summer and rugby in the winter. winter. There was no other option. There was no cricket, there was no soccer, there was yeah. no tennis. By the time I was four or five playing rugby at school, um, and then my my own village had a had a, had a you know a, a prominent rugby team, um, which co which coincided coincided with the kind of birth of mini rugby as they sure. were calling it. So you know I had the ability to play for school on the Saturday morning and then play for the club, club. Saturday yeah. Saturday afternoon. And when you're a young whippersnapper, just you know, the, more, yeah. the, the more the more the you, merrier, yeah. the more the merrier. And if you weren't doing that, you were playing between the the curbs on your own street so 
coupled with the fact is that I lived just outside of Bujen. Bujen was a very prominent rugby team at the time. Right. Um, my dad would take me every Wednesday, Saturday. So, so rugby was hugely influential in yes. my in, in, in my the you know, my calendar and. Yeah. My grandmother and grandfather were devout Bridgen supporters, so you know rugby was in our blood or in my blood certainly, um, and and it, it it all took off from there. I was fortunate to live in an, in a in a region that was a real strong hotbed of rugby. Yeah, I mean South Africans will remember you. Now uh, we spoke briefly, you touched on the Oster Hunt. I mean you 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 became an overnight sensation in South Africa and and because I mean Os at that stage of his career I mean, he, he was all, at any stage of his career a behemoth of a man yeah. and you flattened him I mean you just like you know South Africans all of a sudden were like who the hell is this Welshman <laughs> well it wasn't personal that's for sure <laughs> uh, um, he, he and I had a few laughs um, over the years about it but yes, yeah. listen in the context of, of, of a test match yeah you know there has to be big moments to change to the yep. change the picture the landscape yep. of of the tempo wherever this was the touch paper for for us to to not only stay in that game but just put a little bit Correct. more distance between us and, and, and the Springboks and yeah there's the, the fine margins at the end of the day yes um, but I'm 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 stopped you know no end of times because those who were were there or those who saw that yes. on that day were just uh, yeah. flabbergasted Lasted. by yeah. by how big of a moment it was. It was you know? Yeah, true. It was monumentous. Um, your love for South Africa, in particular Cape Town, I mean, we talk about this being your spiritual home. You lived here for what, six years? Yeah, six years from 2010 to 2016, in a, in a, in a more full time capacity. Yeah. You know, Cape came here. Francois Pinar was instrumental, you know, we were saying, you know what, South Africa is not as over leveraged as the Western world at that time. Sure. Come, come to South Africa. Come, yeah. You, know, you yeah. know you love Cape Town. Yes. You know, you know you love the rugby, you know you love the textures, you've got lots of, you've got lots of friends. friends here. Yeah. So why not? So we kind of came on an exploratory trip, which was going to last three weeks, four weeks. So, so we ended up kind of, you know, being here for the first couple of months and then suddenly you know <laughs> opportunities presented themselves and then suddenly it's a year in and then you get under the you get under the skin of, of, of Cape Town and yeah. you, you realize that whilst it's a beautiful city to visit it's an incredible it's, it's much better to live in yes you know but suddenly, once you get under the under the skin, the skin of the of it. city, yeah. Once you start wearing the city, <laughs> that's right. Once you start to get to know, you know, every suburb has its own inimitable kind of vibe. Absolutely. And, you know, there's something for everyone. Um, the variety of just the like the people, yeah. The colloquialism, everything. You know, everything, everything. There's everything. such a dynamism about it. Yeah. You know, I. I I love that variety, and it's a very cosmopolitan city, yeah. but totally misunderstood. <laughs> totally misunderstood. And the amount of times that I defend South Africa, South Africa or yeah. Cape Town when yeah. I'm away, because yes. people's first and initial thoughts are, oh, but what about this? Oh, yeah, well, but what, what, yeah, I yeah. said, forget about the what, the, yeah. the what about. Yes. But like, this is this is frontier. This is we're at the tip of a continent. This is exploration and adventure at its best yeah you know take that leap of faith come visit enjoy immerse you will never be disappointed your first experience of our stadium that we built for the soccer world cup now being utilized for many sports including rugby and you got to watch uh the box play whales in that stadium what are you what are your thoughts on the stadium i'd been there several times before okay in its uh since, since soccer world cup right but as uh, as a as a music fan. Okay. So it was, this Saturday, last Saturday, was my first rugby experience and wow, what an experience. Yes. Uh, again, I thought there was a great energy there. Uh, you can tell that South Africa and its, you know, fervent rugby mm. supporters have been starved of this type of entertainment Payment. for such a long oh. time. So what a great show. Um, beautiful atmosphere. You know, the, under the backdrop of Table Mountain, 
he could go on. We had I mean, great the, seats. I yeah, mean, we, we were just seats. Well, and the there's, there's there's no better there's no better vista if you're a kind of rugby aficionado or yeah. you're really into the game into than the game. watching it yeah. from behind the post. Exactly. Because you have the view of what really is like the fullback. You can see, see. where the space is, and you kind of you can anticipate and uh, certain things. So what well, was a great test match? It's given that part of town, a, 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 you know, a, a vitalization that, yes. um, that rugby is present in the Western Cape. Yeah. Cape Town is its home, and DHL Stadium now is 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 I still think, you know, the the, the one of the best stadiums in the in the Southern Hemisphere. So. More test match rugby expected in Cape Town? Mm. Hell yes. Absolutely. And uh, I'm, I'm oh, more finals for the Stormers. Gosh, oh, come on. We would have loved to have had the All Blacks at Cape Town Stadium. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. That would have yeah. been special. Um, Scott, let, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, your life at the moment. I mean, you, you obviously, you're visiting us in South Africa. You're back, going back home soon. Um, what's life like for you at the moment? Are you involved in your, obviously, we know that you're a businessman as well. Tell us about, about life currently. Well, listen, my, my, my interests have always been in kind of corporate um, yes. uh, um, real estate, so more in commercial real estate, okay. to say the least. So, um, and, and I, you know, I did that whilst I was playing um, rugby. Yeah. Um, and then I moved on, moved on to do kind of other things in the, in the, in the investment um, arena, s- that kind a, of space. Arena. Yeah. So at, at this moment in time, um, you know, I'm, I'm as busy as I want to be. Sure. I enjoy the stuff that I do here with yeah. the kind of SA Rugby mob and Keo and, and Zelly and that. Um, and coming back to South Africa is always a thrill. Mm. Uh, and I'd like to think that South Africa is not, in, is not still in my past, can be in my future, future. because I love, I, love, I love spending extended periods here because it's great for my, my physical health. My own mental health, as which, yeah. as we know, from a rugby perspective, like, yeah. is, is very topical at the moment. Very. So, I I think this city gives you energy. Where, you know, I think when when I'm back in the northern hemisphere, it's uh, you know, it's it's like life is a little bit more challenging it is. For, for whatever reason. Yeah, and, uh, it's a little bit know, more, more draining. I, it is, and I love the simplicity of what this uh, what the republic offers you and. Uh, and I guess it's because I feel home here, and rugby's been kind to me here, and I've got lots of friends that make me, you know, make me feel, feel welcome here. Yeah. And the hospitality, as you yeah. know, is, is just, first first oh. class. So, Scott, been a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks for for your time today, and uh, yeah, don't forget we are spiritual homies. We'd like to see more of you here.